Hi, this is Frank Kelly with another episode of Math Made Almost Bearable. This is the second of our uh, short talks on um, trying to make statistics bearable, a difficult thing to do. Uh, when I, all the years I taught statistics, my favorite evaluation was, I didn't hate this class as much as I thought I would. And also I've heard that statistics is like the measles. Once you've had it, you're immune to it. So let's try to avoid that and not have the eyes glaze over and see if we can stick with this statistical idea for a little while. In the first talk, I tried to explain that if that the graph of averages of samples from some numerical population pop for population, follow the bell-shaped curve. Now again, there's a, that, that's a little oversimplified, but just that's what we typically use. Okay, so that means, imagine that we were doing the following. Imagine that we are tr going into a third world country and we're trying to see if there's severe malnutrition maybe. And so we think, that, that what we assume is that there's not. That's typically what you do in statistics. So let's assume that the average calorie consumption is, say, 2,500 calories. So that would not be malnutrition. That's enough to live on. Okay. Okay? Now, if we were to take a sample of people in this country and take their sample average, we would get some number. And we know that the distribution of averages ought to look like this. And we would assume that at the middle is 2,500. Okay? That's our assumed curve. Uh, it's not supposed to have the Salvador Dali mustache over here. It's supposed to keep coming. I can't seem to draw that. But it comes down and toward the axis never touches it. So now let's say we take one sample. Take a sample. Uh, I don't know, maybe we sample 80 people or something. Oh, by the way, this idea that the averages follow the bell-shaped curve requires that the samples that you take are reasonably large. Now, what's reasonably large? Well, that's a subject of debate, but for some historical reasons that are really kind of stupid, uh, it's usually said that if you have a sample of at least 30, the central limit theorem works pretty well, and you'll get this kind of graph of averages, okay? There's a historical reason for that. I might talk about it in another episode. So anyway, suppose you take this sample of 100 people and your sample average in this, just this one case, is 950 calories. Way over here, way over here. Well, here's where the basic philosophy of statistics comes into play. Let's suppose that this 950 is so far over on this curve that there's hardly any probability over here. In other words, if we're in fact on this curve, if this is right, if these people are not malnourished, then what we've seen is a real unusual sample. We got a real low number. Now there's two ways you could look at this. You could say, you could take the, the sort of uh, daily news approach. And you could say, wow! We got something really weird. Isn't that great? I love weird stuff. We can put that on the nightly news. Anorexic people all in sample, or something like that. Or non-eaters were the only ones we got in our survey. 
So we could say, yeah, we saw something unusual, wasn't that fun. But statisticians don't work that way. Statisticians assume that the unusual doesn't happen. What they say is, you only think this is unusual because you think you're on this curve. But what if you're really on this curve? What if people are quite malnourished and actually, if you took um, the, the, the sampling population you should get, the, the, the means you would expect to see, let's suppose this was something like 1,000, which is pretty low. Then seeing 950 might not be weird at all. It would just be ordinary. So what the statistician says is, no, 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 you didn't see anything interesting. You were just on the wrong curve. You're really on a curve something like this. And so they would, in the technical language of statistics, they would reject the assumption that the true mean was 2,500. Now, could they be wrong when they did that? Could they be wrong? Yeah, they could. Maybe you really saw something weird and unusual. But a statistician, no. So next time we'll talk a little bit more about this philosophy that's involved in this and I'll make some more connections between three things. Statistics, the nightly news, and soap operas. See you next time on Math Made Almost Bearable.